Okay, so now for the next part of the videos where I will install metric beat on each of the servers where I've installed Elasticsearch. Now, just to avoid any confusion, you don't have to install metric beat on the same server as Elasticsearch. If you don't want to, you can install other things like file beat. There are many other beats. And also, you don't have to install metric beat on a server that has Elasticsearch. You can just install it on a Windows server if you want, or even a CentOS server just by itself. But the important thing is that each of these metric beats I set up, I'll only set them up on the servers because I have the servers already available. I will configure them with the addresses, IP or domain names, doesn't matter, of each of the Elasticsearch servers in the cluster. So this metric beat here will have the address of all three, so it can then decide which server it's going to send its data to. Excellent. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my three servers all with different IPs in different part of the world, New York, Amsterdam and Singapore. I'm not sending any data to any of the servers at the moment. I can actually check the indices on each of the servers and show that there's actually no indexes being stored on those any of those servers. I can also see that their cluster health shows number of nodes three. So they're all connected together and they're all working and they can all agree on the same master node. Okay, so let's now install metric beat on each of those servers. Okay, so it's these commands here. There's a URL to download the Debian package and then we install it. So press enter. Very good. So metric beat is installed on each of those servers now. And it's not running, which is good. We need to configure it. Okay, so you can edit the YML file for metric beat. Scroll down. I won't be using Kibana, so I'm going to comment that out. Okay, so output Elasticsearch. So this is the array of hosts to connect to. Okay, so I've already prepared my list down here. I'm just going to add the port, even though it's default. Just copy that and just put it in here. Okay, so there we go. It's got three hosts. 9200. Okay, so going further down. Okay, so I'm not using Docker or Kubernetes, so I'll just comment out those two lines there. Control X to save this. Now to do exactly the same on the others. I'm not using Kibana. Hosts. Control X, very good. Now, metric beat has a whole lot of modules and by default, the system module is enabled. But we can check that by running metric beat modules list, but go into the folder, CETC metric beat and then run metric beat modules list. And it tells us about all the different modules that it knows about that we can enable. Most of those are disabled, but there is one enabled and that's called system. So that is good already. It's time to start metric beat and check its status very good active running now we can check the indices now we have one metric beat process running on one of the servers we can check the indices to see whether there's an index created in these servers and there is there's a new indice called metric beat 710 plus some other information let's see that on the other servers and the index exists on the other servers in the cluster as well so the cluster is synchronized let's start up metric beat on each of these others as well so very good very good let's just check the indices again we should only have one indice that's it there the metric beat very good so that's what i have i have three elastic search servers configured into a cluster where they are all synchronized with each other and i have three metric beat processes and it doesn't matter which server I install those on. I just have them all configured to point to the Elasticsearch services in the cluster. So now just to demonstrate actually reading this data, I'm going to use Grafana. Okay, so down here in data sources, I'm going to add a data source for Elasticsearch. The URL is going to be just one of those Elasticsearch servers. It doesn't matter which one because they're all in sync. I'm going to use that IP address, ES1. My index name was quite a long name, but I only need to remember even just the first part of it, such as metric beat 710, for example, and then use a, a wildcard for the remainder. Version 7, 
and then save and test. Okay, so I haven't whitelisted my Grafana server IP on any of those servers, so it can't use port 9200, so I'm gonna whitelist that now. So I'm going to insert a rule. I just want to look at the line numbers so I know where to insert it. I want to insert it before the drop on the 9200 rules there. So I'm going to insert it at four or five, doesn't matter. I'll use four IP tables, insert an input rule, at 5 TCP source, that's the IP address of my Grafana server, port 9200 accept. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on all of them because I may reconfigure the data source to look at any of these servers at any time. IP tables, L, roll up, I'll use line numbers. Okay, so drop here is now at six and I have a new one at five for my Grafana server IP. So that's the same on all of them. Okay, going back to Grafana, let's save and test that again and index OK and it has a time field called timestamp. We can now explore that and I can see that there's data coming through and it's reading that data. If I select here, raw data, in each of the lines I have either agent host name for ES2, there's an ES3 down there and there'll be an ES1. So I'll do a simple query for agent dot host name ES1. Okay, and all the results coming back are for ES1, ES2, ES2, and ES3. There we go. Now, if I turn off one of the Elasticsearch servers here, ES1, for example, I will still get data for the metric belt in ES1 because it will also auto update and push its data off to Elasticsearch 2 or 3, depending on what is now the new master node. So I'll do that. Let's stop. Stop on number one. Let's check the cluster master node from the perspective of number ES2, and it says L1. Okay, so L1E. So let's confirm which node that is using this command here cluster state nodes. And it says, so there we go, L1E is node two. Okay, so very, very good. If I go back into Grafana, ES1 is now offline. So I'm going to update my data source to be the IP address of the second one, for example. Doesn't really matter. Save and test, go back to explore. And we can see we're still getting data and all the old data is still intact. ES1. Okay, and there's data from ES1. So there you go, it doesn't matter. If ES1 goes offline or two or three, I'm still getting data from each of the metric beats. And there's a lot of it that can be used to create graphs inside Rafana.